Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's episode we're going to be looking at world composition which is one of the other things I said we would look at in our environmental tutorial. Uh, just a quick FYI while I was messing around um, doing the 60 frames per second video I also sort of made some differences where I changed the bridge a little bit uh, and I brought the river up slightly and things like that so you can see it looks a little bit better. Um, but we're not going to be looking at this today, we're going to be looking at world composition, so let's not look at that. Um, so, create a new folder and call it world comp. Open that up and create a new level and call it persistent level. The reason I call it persistent level is because this is kind of going to be our hub for all of our sub levels within um, the, the level we're creating. Okay, so open that up. Uh, it'll be completely blank like it was um, within oh, let me just open that. it'll be completely blank like it was obviously when we set up our environments level so go into lights bring in a directional light and go down to visual effects bring in a sky atmosphere and an atmospheric fog and an exponential fog and also just type in here sky oh if you can spell it right, unlike me, Sky Blueprint Sphere. Okay, so that gives us everything we need for our level. Great. Okie doke. So, the first thing we want to do is save current. The reason is, is it will not allow us to enable world composition unless we have saved the actual level we want it to be applied to. So, come over to World Settings, which should be on your top right. Enable world composition, tick that. Now, this is almost so. As I was talking about this being a central hub, that almost allow that that one tick almost allows that to become the case. Save all. Okay, always make sure we're saving because we do get crashes within Unreal Engine quite often, especially in 4.25. Um, so now we want the one thing you won't have is the levels tab. To get that, come up to Window, come down, find Levels, and just click on that and it will bring it up on this right hand side for you. When we click on it now it should be empty so there should be nothing in here unless you've brought in packs and things like that uh, into this folder it should be completely empty. Now the reason for that is because we haven't saved any other levels so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new level we're going to call this level one click enter nice and easy and then we're going to open that one up. Now uh, always save, yeah, always save. Even if we've just saved, just save it again, it doesn't matter. So we're going to have this lovely blank project, another blank project. This time we're not going to add any directional lights in or sun spheres or anything like that. All we're going to do is go up to mode at the top here, click landscape, and we'll be presented with this lovely mahusive blank space. We're going to change some of these uh, ever so slightly. Firstly, I'm going to bring it down to 31 quads you don't want a huge landscape uh, if you make a massive landscape and then you create another three massive landscapes you're going to defeat the object of using world composition uh, and you're going to start um, experiencing huge bugs within your game um, especially dropping frame rates and things like that the whole point of this is to to sort of help performance uh, especially for open world games uh, to make them perform better um, so drop that down to i'd say six and six oh there you go it's not too big but it's big enough yeah that you know with 10 of these you could make yourself a, a really nice size landscape for sure okay uh normally i'd add a material in there but because obviously we've been using the brush fly for our environmental tutorial uh it's automatically uh imported in there but that's where i'd put my brush fly pack for sure uh, and the rest i think is okay so we're just going to click create okay this will go back to being black, but you'll see the spotlight where our landscape is. Uh, but don't worry about that. All we need to do is now come back to our persistent level. Again, save. Always save. Uh, and now on our persistent level, you can see we've got level one. Okay, it's, it's populated itself up there for us. But before we get started with any of that, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our levels. Okay, so it's already populated it to level two. Uh, duplicate again, we'll get level three. And then, oh, click on level three, duplicate that, and we get level four. Okay, 
Um, and now, if we save all, oh, where's our, okay, don't know where our levels have gone, but there we go. Um, let's open up our level two and then come back into persist. There we go. Come in, go into one of your random levels and come back out and you'll get your all four of your levels. It just needs to update. Um, I'm not sure why I didn't update automatically, but there we go. Um, but we still haven't got anything in our world, right? So what we want to do now is we want to select all four of those and load them in. And you'll see you've got this huge, huge black area, but th there should be four of these. Where are the rest, right? So again, save. Always be saving. Um, summon world compositions. What I think we need. Yeah, it is. There we go. And we can drag around our terrain. Okay. We're doing all of this within our persistent level. We're doing none of this within um, the actual levels themselves. Okay. So we haven't loaded level one, two, three, or four. This is all happening within our persistent world. Yet, for some reason, we are manipulating these four. Okay. That's because we've allowed, as I said before, the best way to kind of uh, visualize or visualize this or, or uh, it is just to call it like a central hub okay this one persistent level now controls all your other levels okay now it's great that we've moved all these round that's not what we exactly want and you'll see why in a moment if I go to my landscape again because we're in our persistent level if we go to sculpt and we click on sculpt there and we make it nice and big okay so we're getting some really really big uh, effects here okay oh I'm thinking about this might be a bit too big yeah I think it could be a bit too big okay now if I come in somewhere where can I let's load up make current level one okay now which one is one <laughs> gotta figure out which one one is now uh, level two, level four, level three, level one. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to make this ever so slightly organized. That's level four. That's level two. That's level one, and that's level four. No, <laughs> nearly. There we go. Okay, cool. So it's organized, right? Okay. So when I come up to here, it's been a bit slow. I think for some reason. Why is it doing that? Come on. Where's my cursor? Hmm, maybe I'll... Let me do it over here. There you go. Okay, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go. Right, it's because you have... Basically, it's only loading one um, section at a time at the moment, right? And this, this is kind of the example I was trying to show you, okay? I can edit all this outside of level one on level two, level three. I don't have to go into any of it individually right which is what you'd normally have to do um, but you can start editing on the fly okay now the problem is though is that I can't edit any of the others while I'm editing this one right and I'm not getting this big gap okay so let's load up I think this should be level three below here make current okay which one's level three or maybe uh, it's just because I haven't clicked on it so if I select that one which is level three I believe yeah I believe that is level three now I go into landscaping I can do this one but I can't do anything else right that's a bit of an issue it's going to slow you down it's not going to be um, particularly accurate especially with these kind of these lines right it's because I've loaded everything in incorrectly almost with world composition now oh god it's, it's crashed um, yes yeah, because I've almost done it incorrectly in a way so what what I mean by that is that you could do each of your landscapes individually like that if you want to. It would be an absolute pain and it's never going to be quite right, but you, you could, okay? Um, however, there is a far better way of doing it that will, um, <laughs> excuse me, um, increase the kind of, um, it'll just increase... Ooh, I think well, no, not increase. It'll just make make things better, make things smoother. Essentially, is probably a better way of saying it. So let's reload up our persistent level. Now we're back. Um, of course, now 
all your levels will unload every time you rejoin your project so you're going to have to go to your windows reload up your levels and load them up okay but because we're saving it shouldn't matter too much right although we haven't saved our edit of the train but that's fine so again yeah depending on what you click on uh is what you're gonna get level one there level four there level three there level two there okay uh let's save that again because i haven't saved anything again i wasn't saving um the crash has kind of caused that but so yeah so you kind of get the, the, the gist of it anyway so how we're going to do this now is we're going to um click on level two four and three and unload them okay we don't want them to be able to be seen but what we do want to do is we're going to come up to our summons come back to our summons world um screen okay now you'll see that they have become unhighlighted okay and that's fine click on the one that is highlighted level one and we want to right click okay so we get this our uh, options here i'm going to come down to add adjacent level landscape level right um and you've got the arrows so what this will do as long as all your landscapes are the same size don't go making landscapes all different sizes keep every one of your landscapes the same size that's why i copied and duplicated the first level because you shouldn't need to make any more changes to your landscape after that right otherwise this will not work bear that in mind okay um so click on so we want level two to go to the right okay so click on that and it'll go tell me which level you want me to do click level two and you say okay or it exists you want to replace it we say yes and it loads in okay then what you want to do is click on level one come back down to landscape add adjacent landscape click the down arrow we know we already want level three to go there okay because we planned it do that and it loads in okay um, and you might think what is this even doing well you're going to see in a minute okay and we'll load the last one in level four load it in there we go now when we come out the difference is these are stitched together now okay so <coughs> for example when i go into landscape mode uh, and i want to do my sculpting i can sculpt anywhere see the the mouse is going all over the place let's increase our radius and whoa that was probably a bit over eager but you see the point that is now covering a large probably actually all four of our terrain areas okay let's just kind of smooth that down a bit <laughs> but yeah it's um it's done it right so let's go into paint let's add some grass in just so, so you can it looks a bit better um no don't want to do that on a There we go. It'll take a couple of seconds, but there we go. Oh, there you go. A couple of seconds, not even that. Um, and now you've got this huge terrain. So you've, we've stitched four terrains together. This is a huge, huge area already for you to play around with. You can already see it from the guy, like the mountains in the middle. The we know the mountains in the middle. It's a big terrain. Yeah, to already start working in. And all you have to do is is duplicate one, two, three, and four, or which any one of them. To create five six seven eight nine ten to a hundred and you can just keep stitching them together okay and when you stand at the top you look around and you've got this huge area that could be seen by the player okay um yeah and you can just manipulate the terrain to your heart's content uh and create as big a level as you want essentially so yeah so that's world composition in a nutshell um a lot of people use level streaming with world composition the reason i say that is because sometimes if you have very flat terrain with one hill um let's say you've got like four terrain blocks in a row the, the very far this one won't load in because you're not close enough it, the idea of world composition is that it basically uh decides for you what areas sh should be within a within a range of you so that when you walk into the next area it loads up the next three and it's like, so, so it's not loading everything at once essentially that's how you're making these massive worlds uh for you to explore and run around in uh and that's how essentially unreal uh deals with that um so level stream is definitely something i would look into if you are planning on making a world uh, a, a huge open world with world composition definitely look into level streaming and how that works and how you can apply that into your game because that will also um 
definitely help but um thank you so much for watching guys hopefully this has been a little bit helpful to you um if not <laughs> leave me a comment let me know uh what i can do to improve myself or all my videos but um yeah thank you so much guys uh hopefully you'll hit subscribe and like the video leave me a comment um if you have anything you want me to to sort of cover in tutorials please let me know uh, but other than that thank you so much guys and i'll see you in the next video bye